Hello, everyone. I'm Nicole Sellers, and welcome to Driven by Detours, where we share inspiring stories by inspiring people. As you can see, we had to shift our show from our beautiful studio in Atlanta to my in-home studio, but that's okay. I'm just glad to be back and chatting with my friends in the industry. With me today is Mr. Mark Turner. He is one of the top talent agents in the country. He works with A3 Artist Agency, formerly known as Abrams Artists. He's been with them since 1996. Six, I believe, Mark. How long now? So I've actually been with the company since the November of 93 as an assistant. I started as I became an agent in 1996. Yes, but I okay. started in college in the end of 93. Oh, my God. And we met at a hosting workshop in New York City. Oh, my gosh, like 15 years ago. Yeah. Could be. Good yeah. <laughs> so we started working together shortly after that. And, and before we get into kind of what you do and who you work with specifically, talk a little bit about your challenges and how you overcame them. Because I can imagine, I mean, you're vice president and head of nonfiction, of, you know, digital and branded content. You don't just get there overnight. So talk a little bit about your journey and the challenges that you had to overcome. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the challenge, of course, is that I had to change as the industry changed. You know, when I started, so when I started the, the department out of New York in 96, first of all, there was no digital, there was no YouTube, there was no internet-related content. So the focus was almost exclusively at that time on what I call mainstream hosts and broadcasters. That's your talk show hosts, your game show hosts, news reporters, entertainment reporters. That was the bulk of what I did, um, and that was heavily what the industry was across, you know, there was the explosion of cable television. Um, and soon after that was sort of the explosion of reality television as well. So it, the challenge was when I started it, I had to start it, so I didn't, there was, not, there was no predecessor, so I had to do it on my own, and I was an assistant in our commercial department, so I didn't have a background in this. So it, it, right off the bat, there was a challenge. I didn't know what I was doing. That's sure. a challenge. Um, so I had to learn on the job, um, but I was able to uh, develop a department fairly quickly because of the need from the cable networks, and I was able to get clients pretty quickly uh, from some of the other departments uh, mm -hmm. that existing in my company, our commercial department, our theatrical department. The biggest challenge occurred for me, uh, what year, uh, about, about six years ago, mm -hmm. because I was already 40, um, and a whole new industry came into play, which was the digital influencers. These were started out as bloggers years ago, but bloggers weren't traditionally making a lot of money. The agencies weren't really representing bloggers for the most part, some you know on a small level. And there was some money to be made with brands, but it really exploded when that turned to video with YouTube and, and of course, mm -hmm. then Instagram. Now there's TikTok um, and some other platforms. But now it was finding a whole new type of talent that I wasn't accustomed to because I was not a rabid YouTube consumer of YouTube, mm -hmm. um, just based on my age and my interests. So I had to focus on that. And not only that, but unlike with the previous types of talent, when I would pitch them and sell them to the Discovery Channel or Travel Channel or Food Network, whatever it is, I was also now selling the talent to different outlets. It was dealing with brands and the explosion of sort of these digital media companies that didn't exist five and 10 years ago. Again, we had to change with the times and our agency overall has been a leader in this field. Um, mm -hmm. So that helped grow, might help myself grow, but, but the agency and our department as a whole to where we are now 35 people in my department alone, wow. about, half of, about half of them agents across New York, Los Angeles, and London. We opened up a London office in January, um, and amongst those, say, 18 agents, whatever it is, about 12 focus on representing digital influencers. They're, they think their brand is, so that's an area of expertise, a passion. Um, that's a much more, that's a much better path to success across television and digital. And the good news is, unlike pre-YouTube, someone had to pay you to create content. Now, no, I mean, it's nice to get paid, of course, mm -hmm. but no one has to pay you to create content. You can do it yourself across again, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it is. So you can create content, which then can help you get a job. We can help you get a job in a few ways. One is, like our, many of our clients who are YouTubers, they weren't celebrities, they just did it, developed a following. Once you develop a following, you can get money from YouTube and AdSense revenue, and you can get money from brands. So you're creating content, you're investing in yourself. You're creating the content initially for free, building a, a, 
a following and then can get paid for it. Um, but you can also use it to get into other aspects of the industry. You're, you're creating, in essence, a demo reel for yourself all the time. So if you wanted to do, do television hosting, you're now putting out content that's in the uh, organic to who you are and what your interests are, and that could help when there's a TV show opportunity. You know, if you're putting out food-related content, that can help you get a show on the Food Network or Netflix or something like that. Right. So, so it, it, it's both ways. Right. Well, you also represent producers. So what is it like to try and pitch your own show? So let's say, you know, we have a chef at home. She's cooking up her own meals five times a week. She wants to pitch her own show. She's got her own following. How hard is it for you to pitch a show like that that's so overly saturated already? Like, what's the uniqueness that, that you need? Yeah, it's, it's incredibly difficult. I would say of all the areas that I focus on, selling a show, whether it's a producer or a talent, the selling of a, of a show is the most difficult and the, the um, portion of the least likely to success. I would say when someone is new and is starting out, that, that's not a path I would suggest you go unless somehow you've come up with this just really remarkable concept or what I typically advise clients to do um, you have formatted shows and talent-driven shows. A formatted show would be a game show or a talk show or a show like Survivor versus, um, you know, I call it sort of a talent-driven show, which is more like, again, Kardashians or mm -hmm. Real Housewives, where it's less about the concept and more about the talent involved. So if you, whether you're the most experienced producer or no experience, if you're able to find a piece of talent that is really marketable, that is your best chance of selling a show. You can sell a show directly to a network. That can happen. But more, far more often than not, we partner up with established production companies, and we sort of go in together, and we enter into a deal with a production company to what they call option the concept, mm -hmm. uh, which gives them a, the rights for a period of time to try and sell it. Um, so that's also how we strengthen our likelihood of selling it is you partner up with a company that has a track record in producing shows versus doing it, trying to do it on your own. But it is incredibly difficult. Right. And now what's, from your experience, what's the quickest way for talent to build a following? Is it creating content every day? Is it getting on, on TikTok and Instagram, you know, three times an hour? What have you seen work? And what, can, what advice can you give someone that wants to build their brand so they can, in turn, work, essentially? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there's no, you just follow these 10 steps and you'll, be, you'll get 10 million followers if it were that way everyone would do it. But there are things you can do. We actually created what we call social media best practices. It's a full deck that uh, we share with clients to help them. But when you are starting up a channel, uh, you do want to post very consistently. Um, if you're starting a YouTube channel, you certainly want to post once a week at the least, but when you're starting it, probably even more. Again, you want to differentiate yourself by the type of content. It is saturated across fashion and beauty, but there's a lot of people succeeding, a lot of family channels, toy channels, tech channels, food channels. Um, so I think it's like anything else. How do you differentiate yourself? It stems from your personality and the type of content. Um, certain weights, certain hashtags, and certain consistencies in themes. Like you don't necessarily want to, you know, if you're into food, you don't want to do one day of food video, the next day talking about um, your favorite TV show, and the next day talking about politics. That's not the way to build it. Um, you know, there are vlog channels, vloggers that, of course, talk about different things in their lives. But you do want a consistency in your type of content. It should be on brand, whether it's food or fashion or makeup um you also want to make sure you're interacting with your, your your fan base and your audience um you try to do a call to action you know hey guys we can't go out on a date tonight in, in covid world but you know hey i'm going out tonight what, what do you what, what outfit do you like best or you know which lipstick do you like creating the engagement it's basically getting them engaged getting them engaged for sure um is is, is very much what we do and i think it's one of the core mistakes that people make is they don't do that. I mean, it's it's along the lines of everything else we talk about, about, about being authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, people, I think one of the main reasons that people resonate with, you know, people, make, people love celebrities, of course, but when you, when you follow a YouTuber or someone on Instagram, you are loving them for who they are, not for a role they're playing or because you like their movies or because you think they're attractive. You really like with their message which is also why brands love uh, social media influencers because they know, unlike a TV commercial, which gets seen by whoever, you never know who's going to buy a product. Um, when you're watching a YouTube video, 
you're doing it because you specifically want to hear what that person is saying. So right. And I, and I hear the word charisma all the time. Like we, we, we're just looking for charisma. Like what, what is that X factor that you look for? Is it just someone's personality? Is it someone that can just be themselves and not worry about what other people think? And they're just comfortable throwing a camera on no matter what they're doing throughout the day? I think it's all of the above. And it's also, it, it's, it's, it's a personal choice. I mean, some people, one person's charisma, someone else could find obnoxious, you know, but I think charisma, you know, having that, letting them inside to know who you are absolutely is key and being open and being honest um you know being funny being um uh, vulnerable you know that's that's a big one you know for for social media people to really let their viewers know who they are and not just oh they wear this makeup i, I wouldn't know how to define it it's you know it when you see it and i think they're just people that you you're just drawn to i mean like and they're, com they're comfortable with who they are as a person and, and the the common theme i see is they could give a crap what anyone else thinks about them they do what they yeah. do and if you like it you like it and if you don't you don't what do you predict the next six to eight months looks like with production with tv with reality tv what do you see happening right now what are you hearing behind the scenes well what i'm hearing is encouraging um, hearing meaning network execs and, and, produ and production companies that are, of course have these shows that are currently on hiatus, the vast majority are looking to resume production as we get into June at different times, whether it's June, July, or August. A lot of the things that I'm hearing are resuming production over the summer. But again, as of today, very few have been given absolute start date. You have to have a lot of insurance policies that are going to be very expensive and in some cases difficult for the production company to procure, including protecting the crew and cast if they get sick from if they actually get COVID. Will their get will their insurance carrier actually cover them? That's the final um, ticket here to to make sure that productions resume. I think if they can all get that then I do think you are going to see a lot of productions resume. They'll just be shot more. I mean, this uh, production company has sent me a whole 10 page document of all the things they're doing, which is having a medical staff on set, testing everyone before they film, uh, obviously state reducing the number of people on set at all times. Um, everyone who's not on camera wearing a mask, um, even healthier foods to uh, for the for immunity immune systems so there's going to be a lot of changes but i do think i'm hoping again we, you know we're almost in june and that's a pivotal month because i think that you're gonna hopefully see people really try and resume and if they can't for whatever reason whether they start and people get sick or there's a spike in cases and death then yeah, I, I have grave concerns that this will then go on for quite some time, and um, until they have a, you know a vaccine or a cure, or they just come up with dramatically different ways of filming that can be done virtually. Um, that's the other that, you know you you could see a shift to different animated content. Um, uh, again, vir virtual uh, as they've already done with a lot of different different programs yeah. but it's it's not going to be it's not going to be easy yeah and i i think just as on air talent they just have to really cr start creating their own content and just keep that going for as long as they can and yeah. like you said just build your brand build your build your content build that following and when all the dust settles hopefully they'll get some representation and you know move on so, but, you know, we are, we're running out of time, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for hop, hopping on and sharing your expertise with us because this has been so, so helpful, your wealth of knowledge. And um, we're going to check back in with you hopefully in a few months and see how it's all going from there. Yeah, anytime. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Good to see Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. You too.